Yeah. Uh, again, please make sure you have muted your mic, your microphone before we start the presentation. Thank you. Okay. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, participants. Welcome to C Creative Camp Fourth Batch Online Workshop on Urban Agriculture. Today we will have Dr. Ihsan Ahmad Fauzi, a lecturer from Institute Pertanian Bogor, also athlete scientist of CMU Biotrop. Dr. Ihsan will present us course on aquaculture, aquaponics, and algae farming. Sorry. Aquaculture actually. Uh, uh, okay, before we start the presentation, please again make sure you have muted your mic your microphone during the presentation and please do not make any annotation or quote on the display. Please take note on other applications or programs or just take it on a piece of paper or something. Okay, uh, that's it for the introduction. Uh, and now may we present Dr. Ihsan Ahmad Fauzi. Dr. Ihsan. Okay, uh, good afternoon ladies and gentlemen. Uh, as I already introduced before, my name is Ihsan Fauzi. I'm a lecturer in uh, Bogor Agriculture University. It's called IPB University now. Uh, it's uh, one of the oldest aquaculture program for the undergraduate in Indonesia. Uh, we've been in teaching uh, aquaculture since around 40 or 50 years ago. And uh, as, uh, as my background, I, uh, I, I finished uh, my master's degree in Texas A&M University in, in Texas, uh, United States. And I finished my PhD degree in Tokyo University of Marine Science and technology in Tokyo, Japan. Uh, I will like to give a little bit lecture uh, about aquaculture, introduction in aquaculture. Uh, aquaculture is, uh, in Indonesia, at least in Indonesia, there's a stigma that aquaculture uh, is not a bona fide job, especially if you compare to other jobs like jobs in banking or jobs in uh, other place uh, in the city, they, they think that aquaculture is uh, it's a traditional a traditional job uh, that usually uh, have to the farmers, the and uh, in the coastal area. And, and, uh, I hope that after giving this uh, introduction, I will shift point of your point of view and then give a inside about how aquaculture conducted in uh, various country. Okay, uh, first I would like to start on definition of aquaculture. Uh, aquaculture is mainly about grow up, grow up a fish, rearing fish in controlled environment and uh, it was conducted for human welfare. You can conduct it for, for example, uh, for in, in terms of uh, profit, you can grow out fish so you can trade it with other people or you can also uh, do it for a recreational, I mean you uh, grow out fish and then you release it in a pond and people will uh, catch it by fishing and uh, you can also use it for aesthetical, for example if you like to cap uh, ornamental fish like goldfish uh, or uh, other guppy or other ornamental fish. Uh, it's also one of purpose of aquaculture. Uh, aquaculture is should be conducted in good practice, uh, in meaning that aquaculture should be conducted uh, so that it won't uh, affect other <coughs> uh, uh, surrounding environments. Uh, like 10 or 15 years ago, aquaculture is conducted uh, uh, not in the in 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 what it's supposed to be. So there's a lot of uh, pollution related to aquaculture uh, activity uh, in the past days. But uh, right now, aquaculture is also controlled and regulated so that uh, while we can 
while we can produce fish, we can also uh, minimize the effect to the environment. So uh, the, the surrounding environment can be used also for other purposes, such as uh, for tourism or uh, the water can be used for the uh, for the domestic activity in the household. And uh, the concept of aquaculture, aquaculture started first from the uh, capture fishery activity. So uh, like several years before Chris, uh, BC, the people catch fish, people already know how to catch fish, but usually they, they, they just like uh, eat it immediately. Uh, and then uh, after that, people invent like some kind of uh, vessel to hold the fish. So you can put a fish in there. It's usually some kind of like pen, pen, a stick that, uh, what do you call it, that uh, you put stick around, around the river. And then the stick is kind of like fence. So you can put a fish in it and the fish won't escape, but the fish is still alive. And then uh, the, uh, after that, people realized that if you put fish in the contained area, uh, you can actually grow up fish. You can just give them a food uh, from leftover of your dinner or your breakfast and then just give it a fish. Fish will eat it and then the fish will grow big. And after that, the fish can be sold in the market. Uh, so. Uh, in that time, people realized that we can actually grow out fish and then we can uh, take a benefit on it. Because when you uh, grow out fish, you can uh, have a, you can, you can control the condition. You can know that the fish is there. You don't need to go to the like uh, river or to the ocean to just like uh, fishing another fish. So uh, you can save it for later. Uh, in natural aquatic environment, productivity of uh, of the micro of the bio of the animal or surrounding is uh, relatively low. Uh, the productivity of uh, natural aquatic environment, for example, uh, we only have like six fish in 100 meter cu uh, cubic, and then uh, in the aquaculture, we can increase that productivity. We can just like uh, gather the fish, gather 60 fish, and then we put it in the one small container, one meter cubic, and then we try to uh, give some kind of intervention. Intervention in in uh, in the sense that if you gather fish in the uh, small area, it will be very crowded. So you need to have you need it you need to give something. For example, if you gather people in the small space, you will have like mm -hmm. problems with the oxygen and other things. It's similar with the fish. So you gather fish around and then you give an intervention. Uh, the intervention can be a lot of things and uh, uh, it will be mentioned in the next slide. Next. Mm -hmm. And then uh, what do you mean by controlled environment? In the Controlled environment is a uh, we is a concept that we can what do you mean we can uh, we can see we can control we can regulate the number of fish there. We know that if we cap ten fish, we know that it will be ten there. And then we can also uh, regulate the feeding management, uh, meaning that we can give food for them and then we can control like how long. It take will it take to for them to grow, and then we also uh, can regulate fish condition. Uh, for example, if you see one fish uh, kind of sick, and then uh, you 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 can like quarantine the fish so that uh, the fish won't uh, won't infect the disease into other fish. And then uh, the last one, the most important, is you can control the harvest process. Uh, since the fish is already there, it 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 won't take a lot of effort to just gather around the fish. Just take it and then uh, just uh, if you want to uh, package it, just package it in the in the uh, with it with oxygen. It's not it's not hard compared to uh, like gathering sixty fish by catching 
Uh, in the ocean and all things. Uh, next slide. So, uh, ini menjelaskan ini. tentang ini loh. Tunggu ini di makanan, makanan. From Google SMA satu bawah. Please turn off your makanan. Bagi makanan ya. Oh, no, aku wajib lagi. Berarti masih proses berarti. I'm sorry for the part all participants. Please turn off your microphone during the presentation. Thank you. Okay, uh, let's continue. So, you're probably wondering why fish, why shrimp, why mollusks, why aquaculture? Uh, it, uh, historically, aquaculture was conducted to gather food. So, uh, one of the main reason to uh, conduct aquaculture activity is to provide food for the people. Uh, Maybe in, in Indonesia, uh, it's it's the 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 common fish that was cultured is like a giant dormi. But in other country, we have uh, a lot of uh, commodities such as shrimp, such as tuna, such as uh, oyster, and all all the things that you that uh, was a, a favorite things for the people there, and. Uh, most of aquaculture activity in the world is uh, aimed to produce food for to 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 fulfill the demand of people. Uh, since we know that from fisheries, from the uh, bycatch fisheries, we cannot provide uh, enough uh, fish because the population of fish in 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 wild. Uh, water is now declining so we need to provide it through aquaculture aside from uh for food we can also conduct aquaculture activity for hobby for example hobby is uh, we go out this is uh as you can see the the, the one in the left in the top is a called kupi Poiselia reticulata is one of our uh, ornamental fish that common in Indonesia and also in the Philippines. The one in the uh, top right is arwana. Arwana is uh, one of the ornamental fish. It's highly regulated by, it's not easy to get it because it's highly uh, regulated. It's considered as endangered species and it's highly regulated by the government. And then the one uh, in the bottom in the lap is a uh, beta beta fish beta fish is one of the popular ornamental fish in indonesia and also other countries usually in indonesia they use it for fighting beta, beta fighting and aside of fighting we can also have a beta contest so we judge the bit bit beta fish from its appearance and then the one in the bottom middle is a uh, Goldfish, one of the common ornamental fish uh, in in the world, and then the one in the bottom right is a koi. <coughs> koi is a similar family with the common carp, Cyprinus carpio. So, but it it was uh, sought for the pat pattern. So, in in Japan, the koi that has a unique pattern considered a, a really really good fish. <laughs> Next. And then aside from the uh, for food and for hobby, aquaculture is also conducted in, in to, to fulfill uh, the industri industry need. For example, uh, in the top left we can see the pearl oyster, Pintada maxima. It's one of a uh, pearl uh, oyster that, that can produce pearl. And then uh, in the top right, there's also we can also utilize uh, leftover from the shrimp industry. So the shrimp cell can be used by the industry to produce uh, a lot of things uh, from cosmetics and also uh, 
anticoagulant and all the things. Uh, and then also uh, in the bottom left, it's a uh, algae culture, microalgae. It's probably chlorella or nanochloropsis. Uh, it's one of the com common algae that culture. It can be used for the uh, aquaculture industry itself. So algae can be fed into for the fish or uh, can be also used for human supplement. And then the bottom right is a shell of the abalone. Shell of abalone commonly used for the, uh, oh, no. what do you call it, uh, jewelry. So it's uh, the shell has a unique pattern that can be used uh, for various jewelry. Next. Jadi tidak nyata ke anjing? Coba, coba, coba. Bun, kan dah buka yuk. Oh lah. And then uh, why aquaculture? As we know Banyak. that uh, we can also uh, provide this fish and all things from cap capture fisheries. But uh, the problem with oh, capture what? fisheries, as you can see in the graph, it has a have a stagnant production. Yeah. Uh, capacity right now. So it 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 it, it was stagnant oh, at uh, yeah. like around 80 uh, million tons at 2010. And then uh, while aquaculture production is uh, uh, increasing year by year, so uh, to fulfill the increasing no, demand uh, of the seafood, aquaculture is one of the solution that uh, proven to be, to have like a sustainable vision. <laughs> uh, previously, we yeah. talked about human intervention in aquaculture. The human intervention can be uh, divided into several types from the intervention in water quality. Since we gather fish in one area and then fish required like oxygen to breathe. We need to make sure that the oxygen level is uh, adequate for fish to, to grow there. Oh, and then we also uh, give uh, human intervention in terms of feed. We need to give a uh, quality feed since it will, uh, it will make the fish grow faster. And then we also need to uh, make intervention in terms of uh, root stock and fingerling production. We need to select the uh, parental, the the father and the mother. Uh, we need to select that the good one, the one that has a good traits. So it will produce a a, a healthy and uh, children that has a favorable traits for growth or uh, other for example, for the survival or uh, which, uh, it can withstand the disease or pattern in, in terms of ornamental fish and so on. And then the last intervention uh, that can be uh, applied to the aquaculture is uh, in terms of fish health. So we can give vaccine, we can have give medicine if the fish was uh, sick, or we can also uh, prevent the fish to get sick with uh, a lot of technology that available. Next. When One of intervention that was conducted in water, as you can see, is uh, we call it as an aeration. Aeration is mainly it's give air. It's, it increased the, the level of the dissolved oxygen in the, in the water so the fish can breathe better. Uh, there's a lot of uh, type of aeration. You can see the one in the top is uh, one of type of aeration, and then we also have the micro bubble, the one in the bottom, bottom right, and then we also have a pedal wheel, the one in the right, top right, and then we also have the protein skimmer. Uh, that works that can reduce the uh, 
nitrogen level in the in the water. Nitrogen, if it's uh, too high, can be dangerous for the fish. Next. And then intervention in terms in of uh, nutrition uh, can be in the many forms. For example, uh, we have some something called as a live feed. Live feed is uh, such as a live zooplankton, live uh, worm, or uh, live microalgae that can be fed into the fish. Uh, and then we can culture that kind of zooplankton and uh, worm and microalgae. And we also can make an artificial feed. Artificial feed is the one that you commonly give the feed to the fish. It's in the form of pelleted diet or in the form of a dough, like in the in the bottom left or in the bottom middle. We have various type of uh, feed that uh, has a sufficient nutri uh, nutrient quality for the fish. And also, in some some <laughs> special case, if the condition of fish uh, is not good, we can give a medicated <laughs> feed uh, so that it will getting getting better after eating that kind of feed. And then the next is intervention in drug stock. So there's a lot of things that can be done in terms of root stock and fingerling production. We can first, uh, the simplest way is a uh, root stock selection. So we select the best mother and we select the best mother. And by selecting that the best one that we have, we, we assume that we will have the best kit, best kit the the fish fingerling that has a uh, similar traits with the parents. And then we can also conduct something like sex reversal. Uh, so in the fish, when they're still in the larvae stage, the the sex of the fish is not definite yet. It, it's, it's unclear whether it's uh, male or female. So in the larvae stage, we can give some kind of like a hormone uh, and then if you give the hormone, most of the population will be all male or all female. So it depends on what we want to have. Why we want to have the fish, all male fish or all female fish? Sometimes the male or female fish has a, uh, what do you call it, a, a better trait. For example, in tilapia, the male has a better growth compared to female. So it's preferable in tilapia to have a um, male fish. Uh, that's why we conduct the sex reversal. Uh, in the terms of ornamental fish, some of the female fish has a more beautiful pattern. So sometimes we prefer to have female fish. So we conduct sex reversal. So it turn most of the population of the fish that we have turn into the female. Pluma. And then we also have had hyb hybridization. One of example of hybridization is uh, in our catfish. Uh, in Indonesia, we call it lele. Uh, our catfish is a hybrid fish from uh, African catfish and then also other catfish that has a good uh, growth performance. So they uh, they conduct uh, insemination and then they try to cross the African catfish and other fish and then the the fish that we have now is has a better traits compared to uh, our local catfish. And then we have a triploidization. Triploidization is uh, one way to have the, usually the triploid fish, triploid fish that has a triploid grow faster, but sometimes they cannot reproduce. So it it, it is a favorable thing because when the fish uh, already in the, uh, when when the fish trying to prioritize on the reproduction, the 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 growth of the muscle will 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 halt. So uh, it's not favorable for the farmers because the fish will uh, give all the research into reproduction and then uh, 
the the muscle will be not as good as uh, in the younger peer fish. So uh, we conduct repolarization so the growth of the fish will be better and then it won't uh, be able to reproduce. It won't be able to grow up their uh, yeah, uh, ovary or uh, what do you call it, sperm or uh, egg. And then we also have the transgenic fish. Transgenic fish is related to um, molecular modification. Uh, we change the gene. It was it, uh, it 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 involved a lot of technology, and it's pretty advanced technology. And then uh, the last one we have artificial insemination. Uh, sometimes uh, fish need trigger to 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 spawn uh, to, so sometimes if the trigger is not correct the fish won't spawn even though it uh, the body is ready so we we sometimes conduct the artificial insemination we try to uh, collect the testes or collect the eggs from the fish and then try to mix it outside their the fish body and then just like spread it in the water and then uh, the egg will form uh, into the uh, will hatch later on if it's successful and then uh, if the methods was conducted in the right way we we will have like a hatch fish with that hatch uh, normally as as if it's a natural insemination and then the intervention in the fish health, as you can see, there's a lot of things from medicine, the one in the top left is a medicine for fish. It's used for uh, to cure white spot. White spot is one of disease when you have like some kind of uh, white spotting in the body. It can be dangerous and it, it can uh, it can uh, cause mortality in the fish. And then we also have vaccination. Vaccination is commonly used to uh, to prevent viral disease. And then we also uh, have like herbal application to the fish so that uh, the fish can the herbal the active ingredient in the herbal can cure the fish uh, from disease and then the one in the the bottom right is uh, i think it's a supplement you mix it in the fish feed and then the feed will become a medicated feed so it can cure the fish from disease next Okay, this is one of the example of aquaculture activity. As you can see, uh, this is how we say control vessel. We control the area, even though we we conduct aquaculture in, uh, activity in the river or in the uh, or in the lake. We still control it, even though it's just like uh, the the vessel is just from the net. Okay. As you can see in the uh, top left, it's like stick and the net. But the fish won't be able to come out and escape to the river. And then this is one of example of uh, we call it a cage culture. It's commonly found in the Borneo, I think. Or one in the upper left, and then one in the uh, upper right is commonly found in the lake in Chirata and also in uh, Lake Toba in Indonesia. Next. And then this is the one that conducted in land. As you can see, the, we have like a semi-permanent pond that from made from plastic. And then we also have a pond that made from the cement and then we also have the raceway in the top uh, left 
it's a raceway. As you can see, uh, the fish was uh, reared in the uh, high, what do you call it, high flow of water. So uh, the high flow of water will 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 give more oxygen supply to the fish and it will increase the well-being of the fish. Next. So we said before that aquaculture is oriented for the human welfare. Uh, in the case of food production, uh, as you can see, in Indonesia, the domestic consumption of fish in 2011 is only 36.1 kilogram per capita per year. And then uh, in the 2017, the domestic com consumption increased from 36 into 43 kilogram capita per year. So from the 2011 into 2017, the the domestic capita increased 6.9 kilogram, and then uh, multiplied by the population of Indonesia, and we found that it required one point. Uh, 1690 uh, sorry 1,690,500 pound so it's 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 really a big number even when we increase it for just like 6.9 kilogram uh, we need around 1 million 1, 1. 1.6 million and in in 2019, we plan to increase the uh, domestic com, uh, consumption of fish into 55 kilograms per capita per year. So it will increase uh, 12 kilograms per capita per year, and we need around uh, three million uh, ton of fish. So there's a lot of demand, there's a lot of uh, chance to grow up, to scale up the aquaculture activity, and we cannot provide it purely from the capture fisheries because uh, right now the capture fisheries in, is, is stuck in the stagnation phase, so the aquaculture should be, production should be increased uh, in, in the next year. Next. This is uh, the graph about capture fisheries and aquaculture production. As you can see, I said before, the, there's a stagnation in fishery production. And while the demand of the fish product is always increasing, people right now uh, eat fish more often compared to like 10 or 15 years ago. And then it's not also in... in, in what do you call it? Uh, in quantity, but also in variation. Uh, right now, uh, fish like salmon or or dory fish is uh, also trending in in Indonesia at least. So it uh, we 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 are not only increase the consumption of the fish, but we also increase we eat more fish, more type of fish. And then uh, one thing that we should uh, we should realize that uh, Southeast Asia is a central aquaculture production. In the Southeast Asia, we have Indonesia, we have Thailand, we have Vietnam, and then uh, we also have Malaysia and Singapore. It's one of the country that produce fish uh, in the high quality. So aquaculture. Uh, we, we as a main producer producer of the aquaculture uh, goods, we need to uh, keep increasing our efforts in uh, developing aquaculture. Next. Uh, we will now talk about type of aquaculture. So uh, the type of aquaculture can be divided into several uh, type based on a lot of things based on production of process based on water source based on position or location based on production or scale next based on uh, production process aquaculture can be divided into three activity 
procurement of facilities and infrastructure, production process, post harvest, and marketing. And it was be supporting by uh, other activity, including like automis automatization or uh, all the technology that, that can uh, enhance aquaculture activity. Next. Procurement of facility and infrastructure, including uh, providing seed, a good seed, and then providing a good feed for the fish, providing a good medicine, providing a good fertilizer, because sometimes we use, uh, we also grow out zooplankton, and zooplankton uh, can be uh, can be used as a fish feed, and then to grow up, we need fertilizer. And then we also need the equipment, such as net or uh, other things that we use to uh, conduct aquaculture activity. Next. And then in the production process, aquaculture can be divided into three more activities. Seed production, fingerling production, and the grow out. In the seed production, uh, mainly the activity covers from the uh, maintaining the father and the mother, the brood stock, and then after that, uh, producing the eggs and then making the eggs hatching and then make sure that the larvae survive and then survive in the good condition and then after seed production we usually uh, move into fingerling production because uh, fish larvae cannot be placed in directly in the grow out phase so we need to make it bigger a little bit in the fingerling production, it was usually conducted for uh, several weeks into several months, and uh, sometimes if the fish, like if to grow out the fish, you need like one year, we can cut it up. So the farmers usually just like sold the fingerling, and then he doesn't need to wait for one year until the fish become big and can be sold in the market. And then uh, the last one is a grow out. Grow out is from the cover from the fingerling into the in, until it reached the market size. The market size of the fish uh, can be depend on the uh, what do you call it? consumer uh, preference because in Indonesia it's all right to grow out fish until like. 200 grams because we usually uh, eat the fish with the head but in the European or in the United States we need to have like 500 grams until one kilo because they prefer to have a fillet fish next and then after production process we have we also dealing with post harvest and marketing post harvest usually uh, related to transferring the fish into the uh, into the market so we sometimes we need to make sure that the fish was still alive for example in the in the uh, chinese restaurant you usually found a display of a lot of like fish they're alive and then they they catch it and then they cook it immediately so we need to make sure that the fish is alive and then we need to know how to treat the fish uh, if we want to conduct like we transport the fish for uh, one or two days and then uh, we also need to know how to market the fish because sometimes uh, for example in the in the case of catfish uh, if you you need to know the preference of the consumer because in in terms of catfish if the fish is too big the consumer won't eat it they they don't, don't want to buy it so you need to have you need to sell it in the appropriate size and then uh, you need to make sure also how to uh, market the fish in the correct way so uh, so it can be sold in the uh, appropriate price also and then uh, this is a type of aquaculture based on the water source so aquaculture can be uh, 
uh, divided into freshwater aquaculture, brackish water aquaculture, and marine water aquaculture. This is a uh, freshwater aquaculture. As you can see, uh, one of the commodity here is giant kurmi and pangasius catfish. I'm not sure if giant kurmi also uh, available in the Philippines, but this is giant kurmi. This is how we cook it. Usually uh, fried and uh, give a sauce, sweet and sour sauce or hot chili sauce. And then this is pangasius catfish. We sometimes use it. Uh, pangasius catfish is also known as a dory, dory catfish. Uh, we sometimes use it like uh, cook it in as a soup because pangasius has a lot of uh, fat so it, it, it is delicious if you cook it <laughs> as a soup. <coughs> Next. And then this is brackish water aquaculture. For example, uh, milkfish. Milkfish is one of fish that has been cultured in Indonesia for quite a while, maybe 100 or 40, 40 something around that area. It's uh, when Indonesia is still in the uh, traditional kingdom a long, long time ago. And then shrimp. Shrimp also one of commodities that <coughs> was uh, reared in brackish water. Brackish water has a like a salinity around 5 until I think 15. So uh, how to uh, differentiate fresh water, marine water and brackish water usually just like this. If it's salty then it's marine water but it is around it's not salty but you can taste like it's not fresh water and then you can taste a little bit like uh, saltiness it's probably a uh, brackish water no okay next and then a marine aquaculture marine aquaculture is the the one of the most expensive commodity is grouper and snapper uh grouper we have like a humpback grouper and a tiger grouper it's commonly exported into Chinese, Chinese or uh, Taiwan or uh, Singapore or Hong Kong because we don't necessarily eat this fish, uh, but uh, Chinese really like it. It's usually steamed and then uh, cooked with ginger and soy sauce. And then we have snapper. Snapper is one of the commodities that also uh, <laughs> also cultured and also popular. Usually just like grill it and it's it, it tastes uh, good with soy sauce. <laughs> okay, uh type of aquaculture based on location position we divided into two inland aquaculture and uh up uh Aquaculture in the, on the on the ocean or in the lake or the, in the water, and then inland aquaculture can be divided into pond, raceway, or shrimp pond, and uh, aquaculture in the lake or marine or in the sea can be divided into cage culture or pen culture. Next, this is example of in, inland aquaculture. So it was located in the land, and then we usually form of pond or in the form of raceway something next and then this is a uh, example of the pond next and then this is raceway the difference between pond and raceway is though in the water debit so uh, the current is strong in the raceway and it was uh, usually used to grow up a common car Next. And then this is a uh, marine aquaculture. And then this is a shrimp pond. Example of shrimp pond. And then uh, aquaculture based on number of species can be divided into three things. First is monoculture. So in, in the monoculture, we on, only uh, uh, grow up one type of fish. If it's tilapia, then it's just tilapia. If it's, for example, 
uh, drink this drink, but on polyculture, we grow up more than one species. For example, uh, tilapia and shrimp can be also conducted in the British water, and then uh, shrimp and uh, seaweed can also be considered as polyculture. And then the last one is integrated farming. Integrated farming is when we the aquaculture waste, the nitrogen that produced from fish, is used for uh, other purposes, such as for the fertilizer. And that it's commonly used in the aquaponic. So in the aquaponic, when the fish uh, products produce uh, fecal matter, uh, the fecal matter will be used by the <coughs> by the <coughs> by the plant as a fertilizer. It's one of the development of this integrated farming is quite complex because we we involve like a lot of species and a lot of species has a has their uh, role in the in the in the ecology. Yeah. And then this is the type of polyculture as you can see we try to uh, rear a fish that has a different uh, ecological role we are fish that eat aquatic vegetation or fish that uh, eat phytoplankton or zooplankton and uh, insect and other organisms so they they have different type of feed type of uh, preference of feed so they won't like overlap and then it's and then this is the example of um, integrated multicultural aquaculture as you can see in the picture, the fish uh, will, will fed by the artificial feed, pelleted feed, and then uh, the fish will produce uh, fecal matter. Fecal matter will then uh, use as for, by a uh, sea cucumber, holoturia, and then also uh, nitrogen waste will also used by <coughs> seaweed, and then uh, also used by oyster. So uh, we have we can grow up a lot of uh, species and then that species can be used as a value added for the fish culture activity. Okay, uh, aquaculture based on production scale. So aquaculture can be divided also into based on production scale can be divided into uh, several. <coughs> Uh, type one is extensive aquaculture. Extensive aquaculture is when we uh, mainly depend on the live feed, and we we don't we don't actually like give food to the fish. And then second is semi-intensive. Semi-intensive we 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 increase the stocking density of the fish, so the fish is, has a more population, and then we we give some artificial feed some palleted feed uh, and then we also have intensive culture intensive culture is a, when we have like highest stocking density highest population of feed and then we don't um, de uh, depend on the live feed and then we we fed them mainly by palleted feed Next. and then this is type of live feed that commonly used uh, in aquaculture uh, in the top Top left we have cyclops, and then top middle we have this is probably uh, Daphnia, and then <coughs> top right we have Artemia. Artemia is a uh, common species that was used to as a fed for the baby larvae because Artemia is small, so uh, it can fit into baby larvae, lar fish larvae uh, more. And then we also fed them the polycheta. This is Nereis. And then the bottom middle is a uh, rotifer. And then bottom right is a. Uh, it's probably nonocorpsis or uh, chlorella. This is a microalgae. Next. And then this is example of extensive aquaculture. In extensive aquaculture, you don't actually like. Uh, manage them. You just put the fish there and then <coughs> you don't care about the post-harvest or other things. You don't feed them. The fish will eventually uh, grow 
but in in longer period and then next this is semi-intensive semi-intensive is we still fed them a little bit but uh, it also depend on the plant feed next and then this is intensive aquaculture as you can see from the density of fish it's really high density a lot of fish there and then uh, we need to also uh, maintain the water we need to change the water sometimes so that the fish can can grow next okay that's all Thank you. Uh, for your presentation, I think the aquaculture is helping for uh, discussion. And maybe uh, from participants, uh, you have questions. 